I'm Julie. And I'm Melanie. And, and we're, we're Moms, Moms on a Mission, Mission, empowered to bring abundance to our families. So one of my favorite oils is uh, lavender and the reason that I love that is because it's very calming. I just love the effect that it has on my kids and that it's safe enough for my kids to use. I um, haven't tried it for that yet. Really? Uh-uh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, there's nothing quite like lavender at bedtime. So meal planning is something that moms worry about and it's something that I think dads really appreciate when moms can do it <laughs> because meal planning allows you to cut down on your grocery expenses. It cuts down on the amount of time that you're spending running back and forth to a grocery store and it just, it, it, it makes your home run smoother. For one thing to know that a meal is planned, that it's just not just going to be a cold cereal night and for another thing to know that you have on hand what you need to make really good meals that help your family to have good energy and be able to get done the things they need to in a day. Plus I think it can reduce some of the strain on your mind because mm -hmm. um, I read a research poll that says that's the number one thing on a woman's mind is what are we going to have for Isn't dinner tonight? <laughs> Uh, it's so true. Yep. Before we had kids, our minds were so free and wild <laughs> to fly about to other things. And now it's just, what food. are we going to have for dinner? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think for me, the way that I meal plan is because we have such a limited diet. Yeah. I don't really go by a specific recipe, but I like to plan out all of our proteins. Um, and I can't say that I'm always really good at this because consistency isn't my biggest strong suit. <laughs> You creative types. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Oops. Right. But um, the way that I approach it is, okay, we'll have roast one night, and then we'll have ground beef the next night, we'll have chicken, and then we'll have fish. And so I have an idea of what my proteins are, and then I just throw in whatever kind of veggies and shop from our food storage for, you know, what kind of things we have in the freezer um, to put with it. And then I usually pick a starch, and that's about as exciting as it gets at my house. <laughs> right. I, mine goes the same way. What I do in the morning is when breakfast is cooking or breakfast is done, that's when I go downstairs and pull the meat out of the freezer that's going to be served for dinner. I put it out on the counter to thaw, and that way I don't have to worry about defrosting something when we get down to the deadline. It's it's yeah. it's on the counter. It's ready to go. Uh, if we're going to eat dinner at like 6:30. I, because we use a wood-burning stove, it takes a little longer, so I, I start dinner at four, and then it's ready. And when you're talking about meat, like, any, any leftovers that we have from the night before. What are leftovers? <laughs> well, I have seven people in my family, and four of them are little boys. There's no leftovers. Plus, I hate cleaning the kitchen. Yeah. So I tend to make what we're going to eat mm -hmm. and that way I don't have to put food away because if I put it away you know if there's one portion I have four boys who's going to eat it right <laughs> it's not like so. it forms a complete meal and I'm pretty sure that if I cook like a 12 quart pot they would eat the whole thing either mm -hmm. way so it kind of is my budgeting yeah because <laughs> if I if I cook six quarts they'll eat it and they'll be satisfied and they'll have all that they need if I cook 12 quarts they'll probably eat all of it and I will have you know, spent twice the money on that meal. Well, and so I, I think, I think saying that is really important then to recognize that different families have different needs, not even just in the foods that they prepare, but in the way that they, they budget crunch. For me, um, I have extremely busy lunch times. My lunch times are really intense. And so if I have leftovers from the night before, it means I don't have to cook another meal for lunch. And so that's how I save time just because that particular time of the day is super, super busy for yeah. me. Whereas for another mom, that your most busy time of the day might be breakfast. So it just kind of depends on the way you run your family. I don't think it matters how you schedule it as right. long as it is scheduled. Yeah. Yeah, and if we don't, I have found that tempers flare and especially if my husband's home he actually won't feed himself if i have regular yeah, I know, right right he, <laughs> he won't he won't actually go to the fridge and look for something to cook and so if i make sure that when my husband's home i'm making 
a, an extra special effort to make sure that those meals get done on time and I can call him to them. His temper stays cooler and it's more fun for all of us to be together when we are together and then he feels appreciated because the budget isn't getting blown out of proportion because we had to go out to eat yeah. or he felt like he didn't have enough variety in his diet. Which is, for us, that's what we really struggle with is variety. Yeah. My husband really struggles with the fact that we don't have a lot of variety because of our budget and because of our allergies. It can be very hard to find a way to have my husband feel like he's getting enough of what he wants to eat. And that does make the meal planning a little trickier. Yep. And for us, the, the same thing. My husband gets bored with what we eat. And so usually I just say, well... Go do your own thing and yeah. we'll we have potatoes on that night and that's my night to kind of get a break yeah. yeah we we like I like to keep wheat the things that we can't eat I like to keep it on hand for when my husband's home just because I get really hangry is that how you said it hangry <laughs> I get really hangry <laughs> if I don't if I don't get enough to eat my health plummets really quickly and so if I'm already making lunch for the girls and I in a way that we can eat I keep on hand the things that my husband can eat and that are simple. I keep wheat bread on hand even though we can't eat it so that I can at least make him a sandwich. It makes him feel loved and it makes me, it protects, you know, it isn't always out of love from me. Even though he feels like it's love for me, <laughs> sometimes it's love for myself in that I say, I don't want him to be cranky. I don't want to have to deal with him being cranky until dinner time. Instead, I'm going to put the effort in. I'm going to make him a sandwich. I'm going to put some thought into it, make sure it's delicious, and I'm going to feed him. And that way I know that I did everything that I could. And maybe that's Could. And maybe that sounds like codependence and enabling. Well, but no, as moms, it's so important that we guard our health. Yeah. And it's so important because if mom crumbles, the whole house just falls to yeah. bits. So I think it's really valid. And I think every woman out there needs to hear that we need to do those kind of things to protect our health and protect our sanity. Because without that, then it doesn't matter what you did, everything goes to pot. It, it is a full-time job, guys. Being the stay-at-home parent that manages these things is invaluable. There is no way to replace that. The only way you can replace that is to buy everything in a box from the grocery store. If you don't meal plan, that is your option. And then what comes with that is the chemicals and the cost and the uh, refined foods. What comes along with not meal planning is that everything has to be bought retail. And when you buy everything with retail, you pay for it through the nose. So shopping from your own pantry or from your food storage is something, you know, start there and then go off of that. And one thing I want to say in this, and Melanie can cut it out if she wants to, <laughs> is that think about what the ingredients are on those boxed items that you are getting from the grocery store, your pizza or your chicken nuggets or whatever it is. And I want you to think about what the ingredients are on the bag of feed at the feed store. Mm -hmm. Can you tell a difference between those ingredients? Soy, corn, yeah. reprocessed chicken protein. Soy, corn, reprocessed chicken protein. And so to me, if I'm eating and feeding my family out of a box, what it means is that I'm just livestock to somebody. Somebody thinks of me mm -hmm. as a means of income and I am livestock. They want me to continue to buy their product and so they're go gonna just put junk in it because they can. And then they'll put MSG on top of that so, so that, that it, it enhances like food. the flavors beyond, it heightens your senses to, so that you're dull to the taste of real food. Yeah. So yeah, no, I totally agree with you. Totally, 100%. So even if, whether it's a mom at home or a dad at home, I don't wanna be livestock. <laughs> I want to have a say about what goes into my family's body and I don't want to pay an, an elevated price for someone to make a killing off me by feeding my family what is literally garbage, what is literally a waste product from the agricultural uh, Monsanto machine. So go check out our video next week which will be about how to uh, meal plan from your food storage, how to get together your food storage so that you can meal plan out of it. And we'll talk to you later. Bye. Tell me if I've eaten my teeth, okay?
really good. Just if you can okay. see it from there, it's probably big enough that I need to take it out. <laughs> it's not like they really need to see anything anyway. You okay? Yeah, you I just need to sneeze. <laughs> we'll get through it. <laughs> really hard not to sneeze. How oh, rude. Maybe I need to like go blow my nose now. Darn it, it'll ruin my makeup. Nope, we're not gonna. <laughs> Sometimes you can create allergies. <laughs> so how do you meal plan? <laughs> okay, and I don't like paper telling me what to do, so then I get rebellious. Right. <laughs>